Hi drummers, hope you're well. Right, finger control. This is an absolutely massively important technique, I think. In the whole of drumming, this is in the top sort of three, I'd say, like physical techniques involved. This is the idea of playing a multiple stream of notes with one stick in this manner. Hopefully you can see this, all right? I'll do it a bit more side on. Playing a, a stream of notes in this manner. So using your fingers at the back of your grip to help the stick out. Absolutely crucial. Now, I wanted to do a little practice pad video for this because I had a few messages recently from people saying, I've got a practice pad and actually I haven't made very many videos about what to do with a practice pad or about exercises to do on a practice pad. So I really wanted to do that because I actually use it quite a lot, but I'm conscious that I haven't featured it in these videos very much. I think pa practice pads are great. And I think physical skills like this, which are so often overlooked by drummers, are really, for my money, right at the heart of playing well. If you can develop these sorts of physical skills from practice pad practice or playing on a tabletop or whatever, um, then that can go such a long way and that will penetrate through your drumming so much and just elevate your playing way above someone who hasn't done that sort of practice. This really comes down to stuff like really making truly in your heart, making the decision that you want to be a good musician and you're going to invest the effort. So we're not talking here about 30 seconds on the pad, every two weeks we're talking about like every day getting the sticks in your hand when you're watching tv for me it's like when i'm cooking food or cooking dinner like whatever any any time you you get 30 seconds here and there a minute here and there um or longer periods of time and just every day having the sticks in your hand and doing this so that's that's really worth saying i think the other thing i want to say about this at the start when we get too into the technique is this is a technical exercise, a practice pad type of exercise. When you're making music on the drum kit, when you're under the lights on the stage, when you're in the recording studio, it's a completely different beast. I don't really think in these terms at all, honestly, when I'm making music. Music is, for my money, and the reason I love it, is it's emotional communication, right? When you're playing music, you wanna be thinking about that stuff. How does this feel? How does it groove? What's the emotional stuff that I'm getting across? You know, blue, great blues musicians to talk about telling a story about your own life, man. Tell people about your life when you're playing your instrument. All of that stuff, making music, is very detached, I think, from this stuff. Here, this is where you develop the physical skill. And then on the kit, when you're making music, especially when you're being creative, that's your chance to sort of do the emotional stuff. If you've worked on your physical skills, the emotional stuff that you can think and feel will come out on the kit. That's such a huge concept. So I quite like practice pads because they allow you to kind of do the physical, not musical stuff, kind of separately. And actually these days I quite dig just going to the kit when it's time to make music. I tend to play practice pad or V drums, electronic kit, when I'm warming up and doing physical skill stuff. And when I come to the kit, I really love just making music on the drum kit. That's kind of how I see it. Anyway, I'll crack on. So the big idea here is, if you've seen my previous video about, about bounced double strokes, playing quick doubles, this is kind of where this, this takes off, honestly. The idea with a bounced double stroke is, really briefly, you throw the stick down, the stick bounces up on your, on your fulcrum, right, between your finger, I think of it as the top crease in your finger and your thumb. The stick bounces up in that way, and then you snap the stick up for the second note. This is a bounce double stroke. Most elusive part of that by far for new drummers starting out in the sessions I do here is um, is the bounce itself. So spend a load of time with that. Sticks bounce, man. You've got to get the, the fulcrum here nice and light so it'll hinge. Throw the stick down with your wrist, have it bounce up. That's a huge part of it. Spend some time with that if you haven't. And I'll also link in the description below this to my video about the, about the bounce double stroke. As I say, this picks up from there. So what we're going to do here is start... Once the stick's bounced up that first time, using our fingers at the back to just give it a little push so it'll bounce again. And again and again. So hopefully you can see what's happening here. Every time the stick gets to the top of its little run, I'm giving it another little push down to get it to bounce again in this manner here. So it's all the time hinging on my fulcrum, but I'm just giving it a little push. Now often drummers will start doing this and they say stuff like, I'm not getting it, I'm struggling. Um, this, I can't stress this enough, this will take time and effort, man. Again, this comes back to like, you're truly in your heart, again, making the decision to be good at this. This is a long game and you have to invest time and effort in it. It's not gonna be very good the, the first few times. Um, we're talking here about weeks and months and I would say eventually, well, year, totally years of a developing physical skill here. This is your new nervous tip, get to know it because you're gonna be doing this a lot, right? So sitting around, you're watching TV, uh, cooking your dinner again, do any time you get a chance, get that stick moving. Throw it down the first time, and then give it a little push each time. Now you don't have to suddenly go into playing like a stream of 100 notes in a row. You can just do some threes. You see that? So you bounce on the first one, fingers give it a little push for the second, and on the third one, 
what you'll do is actually like the second note of a bounce double stroke, you'll pull it back into your hand again. You see that? Four. So the point is the first note you play from your wrist and let the stick bounce up. Any ones in the middle of the sequence, you're gonna just give it a little push with those fingers, your middle finger, ring finger, little finger. Uh, so first note is the wrist, then however you're gonna do, you give it a little push. And then the last one of the sequences, you put it back into your hand. So a bounce double is open, close, like a multiple stream of notes with finger control is open, push, 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 close, right? So you do some threes, you do some fours. So first you can just do them individually. As you progress, you can start to build up to a tempo. And just build it from there, man. You're never off duty. You do threes, fours, five, six, sevens, up to 10. You just keep going. You're not struggling. You're not, not getting it. It really, really does take time. You chisel this out of stone, right? It doesn't like arrive in a puff of smoke. You chisel it out of stone. So that's the big thing with that. Um, loads and loads of fun things you could do. You could do streams with the right, streams with the left. Now, one of the things that um, people often talk about here is hand position. Now, I personally find like putting my thumb on top, so-called French hand position, is quite pleasant for doing this. Other drummers will find that putting the back of their hand facing up, Germanic hand position, they like. I tend to find that sends my stick off at a slight angle. Um, and then somewhere in between the American, that's fine as well. Basically, have a play around, see what you get comfortable with. That thumb on top for me really works really works well for this. Some other cool things you can do. So even if you don't have your sticks handy, this movement, absolutely huge. And the thing with this is, again, based on the sessions that we have here, so many drummers just haven't really developed this ability to sort of move your fingers in this manner. Um, great physical drills you can do. Even if you don't have sticks, when you're standing around, put your finger and thumb together. This is a Dom Famular exercise, didn't invent this. Uh, finger and thumb together, as if you were holding a drumstick. And then at the back of your grip, just get your fingers working, right? So you can play some rudiments, single strokes, double strokes, paradiddles, right? <laughs> just get those fingers working, that's really huge. Because, it's not again, it's not a movement that you make a lot in your, in your everyday life. Another great one is, also Dom Famular, I think, turn the stick around, right? So if you don't have a practice pad to hit, grab your stick, Turn it around. I do this all the time before I'm about to go on play play a gig, right? Warm up. Turn your stick around in this manner and using just your fingers, so not using your wrist here, just using your fingers, do this. Get the stick hitting the other side of your arm, right and left. You see this brilliant way to cultivate and hone that technique. Classic drummer's warm up. Now, again, this is very sort of pure physical skill drill, isn't it? So a bit of this each day and this will build and build and build. Um, Applications of this are absolutely huge on the kit. If you need to play stream of notes on the rise, stream of notes on the hi-hat, if you need to play, man, fast single stroke roll, having those fingers working underneath can massively help give the stick a real snap as well. So really what I'm getting at here is this is a huge investment of effort, but it really, really, really isn't complicated. It's just a case of getting the stick bouncing that first time, use your wrist, throw it down, get it to bounce, use your fingers at the back, play a stream of notes, the last one in the sequence, you're gonna close your hand back up, right? Again, when you're playing grooves on the kit, you're not really thinking in these terms and you, you'll just assimilate it. That's the big idea here. I hope that makes a bit of sense. And uh, I just think that's one of the all time classic like practice pad um, drills. You're never off duty. If you truly want to be good at this and develop like facility playing with one hand, uh, make that decision again to be a musician who can do this sort of stuff and invest that time and effort in it. And it just has it just has to become part of you, right? Again, when you're sitting around, you're never off duty, man, I'm tripping. I go running, I've been running along, I find my hands doing this, right? Because that's it. I think once you make that emotional decision to be a musician, to develop this skill, this is the kind of thing you, you need to do, right? And this, please understand, because I've been doing this job for quite a lot of years now. One of the things I've noticed is people so often don't understand this. Please understand this is a hugely long game and you've got to be patient and you've got to build this bit by bit. It starts with the decision that you're going to be good at this. It takes weeks and months and years. Good news, it doesn't take you years to get some facility going, but it does take you years to really get that smoothness, I reckon. I'm definitely still working on it. Thanks so much. Any questions about anything, give us a shout. And uh, I really appreciate you watching these videos. As always, as you can see, I'm in my new studio here and it's far from finished, but we're kind of in and up and running and I'm doing lessons here and playing and, and rehearsing here and all that stuff. So that's great. Um, thanks so much for watching as always. Please like, share and subscribe. Really appreciate that. If you do subscribe to these videos and you want to get a notification every time I put one up, then uh, please press the little bell icon. 
please, uh, oh, if, consider, if you want to support this channel, one great way is to visit my Amazon shop, amazon.co.uk slash shop slash Mike Barnes Drums. It's all linked in the description below. Uh, that's all the drum stuff that I'd use and recommend. So that's a brilliant way to support this channel if you want to look at that. Um, and thanks as well, to, as well to all the lovely people who buy me a coffee at buy me a coffee. Appreciate that no end. And uh, that's it for now. I think thanks so much. I'll see you soon.